In the past, you have heard me talk about service dogs, and today I'm going to take a different angle. Um, so let's get started on this one. Service dogs are uh, allowed wherever the public is allowed. So there are things that I've mentioned in other videos in which if a service dog is not behaving, disbehaving, barking, growling, um, trying to sit on seats, trying to grab food, you know, all those behaviors are absolutely prohibited with a well-trained service dog. Um, and you could get removed <laughs> from wherever you are, you can get removed for that kind of behavior in your service dog. So um, y you need to realize that and to make sure that your service dog is appropriate in public and to help you in some way in public. If your service dog is not going to be very helpful to you in public, then it can be a service dog that stays home. But um, a lot of these service dogs are to uh, bring with you in, in public. So what happens when a service dog, well-behaved, doesn't do anything wrong, and is rejected uh, from the establishment? Now, this, unfortunately, is happening more and more. And the, one of the reasons has been lack of education. So it really, you have to do this with a delicate dance uh, and, and try to figure out what establishments. Now, this shouldn't happen. <laughs> the ADA is on your side, um, but the lack of education is out there, and especially with new establishments that have no clue about service dogs and possibly people from different countries that don't know those laws about service dogs. So it's important for you to bring along, you know, the basic ADA um, description of service dogs and where they are allowed to, to go. Now, a lot of times, you know, in new establishments that have to do with food, a lot of times uh, service dogs are rejected because they think that the Department of Health is going to come down on them because a service dog came in. And that is not correct. Um, they believe that, you know, the service dog could be uh, uh, a danger to their food products or whatever's going on, whatever's being sold um, could be an impediment. And it's not. The ADA uh, is stronger than the, the, the food industry or the food rules and regulations, and they know that. The food industry knows about service dogs, and they know that the service dog is allowed and grocery stores, restaurants, meat markets, fish markets, you know, so all of that has to be looked into. Um, and we, we need to get out there and educate. But I am warning you that if you are planning to get a service dog or your service dog is about to be able to launch in public with you, that there are situations in which you will be rejected and how you need to handle that. So I just saw a video recently or an article I read where a blind person uh, was uh, turned down because of her service dog. Now, <laughs> how is that possible? I say to myself, how is that possible? Uh, you know, and you don't want to get into an argument and all that kind of stuff, especially the person who has a disability. Uh, but, you know, it is important to, to figure out how you're going to handle that. Um, and here are some suggestions that I would have. All right, so what we're really talking about here is a legal issue and um, you need to have that kind of in your head uh, because it's, it's not one or the other. It's, it's not gray. It's either black or white right now, uh, especially when you look at a law. Uh, it does have some variations to it uh, when things are not working well. 
So let me read you this specific law. This comes from ADA.gov, and I will post those links uh, down below in the description box. But uh, this is how service animal is defined. Service animals are defined as dogs that are individually trained to do work or perform tasks for people with disabilities. So that's the, the bottom line. Examples of such work or tasks include guiding people who are blind, alerting people who are deaf, pulling a wheelchair, alerting and protecting a person who is having a seizure, reminding a person with mental illness to take prescription medications, calming a person with post-traumatic stress disorder during an anxiety attack, or performing other duties. Service animals are working animals, not pets. The work or task a dog has been trained to provide must be directly related to the person's disability. Dogs whose sole function is to provide comfort or emotional support do not qualify as service animals under the ADA. And this needs to be spoken loud and clear because the people with emotional support animals are saying that they're protected under the ADA and they're not. Um, also the, you know, so this is, this is a big problem, uh, because it's causing some confusion in the community. So ESAs are, are not protected under the ADA. The definition does not affect or limit the broader definition of assistance animal under the Fair Housing Act or the broader definition of service animal under the Air Carrier Access Act. Some state or local laws also define service animal more broadly than the ADA does. Information about such laws can be obtained from the relevant state attorney general office, general's office. So um, that is the core definition of service dogs and I'm sorry for those who have, um, you know, dogs whose sole function is to provide uh, comfort or emotional support are not under the ADA at all. So uh, the ESAs, the emotional support animals, can get a letter from their doctor to be in the apartment with them, you know, for housing, but nothing else. So if you ever hear, oh, mine's an emotional support dog, we're protected under the ADA, yada, yada, not true. So <laughs> they need to read the law. So where service animals are allowed. Under the ADA, state and local governments, businesses, and non-for-profit organizations that serve the public generally must allow service animals to accompany people with disabilities in all areas of the facility where the public is allowed to go. So that last piece is important, where the public is allowed to go. For example, in a hospital, it usually would be inappropriate uh, to exclude a service animal from areas such as uh, patient rooms, clinics, cafeterias, or examination rooms. However, However, it may be appropriate to exclude a service animal from an operating rooms or burn units where the animal's presence may compromise a sterile environment. So there is some, on the lighter side, in common sense limitations for a service animal. Service animals must be under control. So a service animal must be under the control of its handler under the ADA, service animals must be harnessed, leashed, or tethered unless the individual's disability prevents using these devices or these devices interfere with the animal's uh, safe, effective performance of tasks. In that case, the individual must maintain control 
of the animal through voice signal, voice signal or other controls. So those service animals are usually those who are helping people with epilepsy or fainting issues or, um, you know, because they need to lie down on them. So they need to be loose, you know, and, and free of any obstacle of doing their task. So those would be the only ones. If you have a, if one dog for the blind, they need to use their harness. Uh, for the deaf, they need to use, you know, a leash or their um, harness. Uh, you know, so it's that kind of thing. So this is, this is really important. Uh, I want people to understand that we're dealing with the law and there's rarely black and white. <laughs> The really gray is what I wanted to say. Black and white is, is pretty much what this is describing. And it's common sense. There is another limitation for service animals, and that would be safaris or zoos because there are predators. And if you go to a zoo, you could upset the lions, tigers, uh, leopards, you know, because the service animal would be seen as a snack. <laughs> so... Uh, a lot of zoos will prohibit your service animal from coming in or only to be in service in certain areas of the zoo. So safaris, I would not take your uh, service animal because it could become a snack. So <laughs> now, <coughs> the law continues. I'm not going to read all of that, but um, I will leave the link so you are very clear and you get it in your head. Now, I was talking about people from other countries or other cultures that um, are not aware of the ADA. When they put up their store, they put up their business, and all of a sudden you need to come in and they say absolutely not, or the employee who is not aware about the ADA and service animals. So that becomes you know, a thing that needs to be discussed with the employee. If it is an employee situation, then you ask for their supervisor, and then you discuss the situation with your supervisor, with their supervisor, uh, so that they can clarify. You need to have a section of the service of uh, the ADA descriptions of service animals and where they are allowed. Um, so that's really important for you to have if you're going to be that type of advocate. If it is really needed, you know, for you to get into that facility. Um, and you are stopped by the staff and the manager, then you know the police can be called. You can call the police, they can come in, they can see that your dog is a service animal, it's behaving very well, it's behaving the way it's supposed to, it's tethered correctly, and you have a clear disability, um, whether it's hearing loss or whatever, you know, the dog needs to be uh, labeled. In this case, that's why I really encourage people to use a, a, a vest so that it is marked, you know, uh, service dog for uh, the blind, because sometimes people, even though they see the hardness for the blind, they d don't get it. Uh, but also a service dog for hearing loss or a service dog for seizures. It's a medical service dog. So that's why it's important to have the vest and have it the dog labeled. So, or balanced service dog, have it labeled on the vest. So it is happening that more and more people are taking their pets in and passing them on as service animals. Oh, this is my service animal. And they have this little tiny thing. Um, <laughs> some dogs, you know, are small because they uh, signal somebody uh, for medications or, you know, service dogs. Small service dogs can be assigned for hearing, hearing loss, or deafness. So small dogs are, are in, in, the, in the field for service animals. They're smart, they're capable, uh, they're very alert and aware and can do the job. Um, for the most part, um, companies usually use, uh, use Labradors, they use Golden Retrievers, as service animals, and not so much the smaller ones. You'll see the smaller ones from time to time. But in stores and restaurants, people are passing their 
dogs, their pets, as service animals, and that is what's causing a problem. Um, their lack of behavior will show when they're just pets. They'll bark, they'll snarl, they'll not behave, they'll, you know, and you can get kicked out. They can get kicked out if their animal doesn't behave. Doesn't matter if if it's a, even if it's a service dog and the service dog is going berserk for whatever reason, barking and snapping at people or snapping at other dogs, that's it. The store or the restaurant or the facility has the power to kick you out if that dog doesn't behave. And even if that dog starts, you know, a dog can have a bad day. An ADA, you know, a, a good service dog can have a bad day. But if that starts to happen, remove yourself before somebody removes you and figure out what's going on with, with the dog. Usually service dogs, well-trained service dogs, don't do that. I had one incident in which I was with the, in a restaurant and uh, Johnny was on the floor underneath the table, but he was facing a mirror. And I had never placed Johnny in front of a mirror before. So I didn't know how he would react, but he was in, the, in, in front of the mirror. He was growling. And so <laughs> the, one of the patrons next in the next table just gently came up to me and said, ma'am, your dog is growling at himself in the mirror. So um, I just looked down. I said, Johnny, turn around. So he got up and turned around and kind of looked at me like, you know, there's, a, there's another dog in the mirror there. <laughs> I said, Johnny, lie down. <laughs> so <laughs> he went, poop. <laughs> so I just had to move him, and the problem was over. But uh, those are the things that you have to prevent. Make sure that your animal, your service animal, is uh, appropriate for public um, use. For those who are using their pets and passing them on as, as service animals, I plead with you, do not do that. You're breaking the law, first of all, um, and you're causing problems for us who are truly using service animals. And for those who are using ESAs, emotional support animals, you are not protected under the ADA. <laughs> and it's clear, if you look at the law, you go to the link, it's not true. So whoever keeps on telling you that your ESA is protected under the ADA, sorry, not true. So uh, what you do want to do is, you know, get the doctor's letter, whatever you need for your apartment, leave your dog in the apartment. That's where it belongs if you leave. So even if the dog has a heart attack because you left, not my problem, not the ADA's problem. So you may be tossed out if your dog is just an ESA. But it is a serious issue uh, for us right now. We need to continue to educate in stores, in restaurants, in other facilities about service animals. Uh, so that we, I don't know why it's been falling apart in which service animals are being rejected more and more. Um, there is a, a team of two people that I've seen them on YouTube. I have to see if they're still there, still trying to educate. But their dogs are full of beads and all kinds of fancy stuff hanging from them, and they try to go into stores, and of course they're going to get kicked out. The dogs do not look like service animals. They don't. And sometimes they have not behaved appropriately in public. And so these two people wonder why they keep on getting kicked out, because they've gotten kicked out of several stores. So, you know, this, this is a big problem. So uh, get to know the law is my guidance. Educate people as much as you can. And uh, just know that you might run into a situation in which your dog is prevented from going into a facility. And for that, you know, first you talk to the employee, you educate him. If there's no budge there, ask to talk to the manager. 
and the manager, for the most part, will be aware, but present them with the law so they can look it up and be educated about it, and then they'll probably let the dog in at that point. But if not, you can also call the authorities. That's a little extreme, but call the authorities. The authorities come, educate the owner, and then they let you in for the most part. But sometimes by that time, you don't even want to go in. You'll find another store. <laughs> That's my thinking. But, uh, yeah, it, it's really important to consider where you're going and the type of behavior you want to see in your dog or that you need in your dog. Um, if, if, if some of you out there have a service dog and you're hoping that service dog will also guard you, protect you, um, that's not the point of a service dog. Service dog never should be guarded and protecting you. That's not the point of a service dog at all. And that is trained right out of them so that they don't bark and snarl at other people uh, ever, even at home. So uh, my dog had a little bit of that when we were at the apartment. What I did was he would bark when somebody would come at the door um, and, you know, that's not what I needed from him. So I would have a treat in my pocket. If there was uh, a knock at the door, I would say, Johnny, come and get the treat. Signal. So he would come running to me. He would get the treat, and then he would paw me to let me know that somebody was at the door. So that's what I wanted to see in him and not the barking. So he got the idea after practicing several times. So, you know, sometimes a dog will exhibit some type of behavior that you don't need or you don't want or shouldn't do at all. And then you can contact the trainer or an organization to get some tips on how to train that out of the service dog. Um, so that's, that's what I want to say right now. Be aware that you might be prevented from going into a facility and the steps that you can take to remedy that, and hopefully it'll work. Uh, I cannot believe that this blind person was prevented from going into a facility. That is, blows my mind, absolutely blows my mind. Uh, but, you know, all other service dogs are just as important. So we want to continue to educate, especially in new facilities, new restaurants, new owners, um, you would think that, that with the facility and all the license they have to get, that that would be included, you know, the ADA, but sometimes it's missed. So I want to invite you to get to know the rules and regulations of the ADA. Who is included in the ADA? Who is not included in the ADA? Um, and uh, pets are absolutely prohibited. Uh, so please, if you have a pet, keep them at home or drop them off at, at someone's house to take care of them while you're gone. Um, so just don't, you know, scramble things for the people who really need their service dogs with them. That's what you're doing. You're prohibiting and getting people very annoyed in their facilities, and I, I don't blame them at all. They had a bad experience with someone who came in with a pet who was not a service dog, and then they see a service dog, a real service dog coming in, and then the owner or the manager just doesn't want to deal with it, and so it just causes a mess and a confusion. So pets, stay at home. ESAs, stay at home. And true service dogs must you know, be able to go wherever the public goes. So. Uh, that's all I had to say about that. Um, if you have any more or further questions, uh, please post them here and we can answer them. And uh, I will see you in the next one. And feel free to look at any of the videos that are coming up. And I'll see you. <laughs>